Very good morning to you, Nigel. Great to see you this morning. Good morning. Good morning. What did you make of it then? From a TV perspective, from a GB News perspective, it worked. Uh, the audience were genuinely undecided, and that was the object of the exercise. Um, so, so I think that was good, and I'm sure that now Keir Starmer will accept our invitation. That's good too. Uh, as far as Sirak himself was concerned, well, actually, in many ways, the format suited him. I mean, the first question in cricketing terms was a dolly drop, wasn't it? You know, mm. somebody from Darling said, oh, I've been there today, we've moved the tax office there. Uh, he was approachable enough, but I thought the answers were all very formulaic. You know, we've heard every single one of them before. They get repeated over and over and over. Uh, but the problem with the, the, the downside was he wasn't challenged. He says, we're cutting your taxes. Well, no, actually, you're dragging millions into the 40p tax ban. He goes on saying, we're cutting the debt. No, you are not cutting the debt. Um, he, you know, on stop the boats. Oh, well, you know, suddenly 25,000 young men coming illegal is seen to be a victory. And there was no, there was no method given no way of anyone coming back at him. So I think he had a very soft run, and I think he will have left it feeling pretty happy. Yeah, and because uh, 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 yes, and I mean, though you saw that straw poll night, or, or albeit a very small basis, um, it was an undecided audience. Yeah. Fifty percent backed him. I think Downing Street would take that as a victory. Hmm. Oh, I agree. No, look, it was a good evening for Sunak. He was able to put out the standard spin messages without being challenged. The format suited him, uh, just as it will suit Starmer. Uh, you know, if you don't have an interlocutor, a sort of, you know, Alistair Stewart type in the middle, then they can get away with saying pretty much anything. You say that you're, you're pretty sure uh, Sir Keir Starmer will, will do the same thing and he will take part in a people's forum. How do you think he would fare? Do you think he's more comfortable in front of an audience than Rishi Sunak is? I don't know. I mean, let's face it, you know, he did stand up in court for many, many years in front of judges, jurors and packed courtrooms and, and deliver. So you would have thought he could manage, uh, you know, a GB News audience of 100 people. Um, look, you know, Starmer comes across often as being very wooden. Sunak can come across as being a bit insincere. Uh, you know, neither of them are gifted natural leaders. I mean, that's certainly true. But I don't think Starmer would have, would have anything to fear from coming on. That's the point I'm making. You know, if anything, if anything, the format proved to be too gentle, um, apart from our friend north of the border, who was very, very upset um, about COVID harms. Uh, and wasn't it surprising how many of the audience agreed with him? Yeah. Did you learn anything from it, Nigel, about the character or the performance of Rishi Sunak that perhaps you didn't know before the evening? Not a single thing. What I learned was uh, that he has his stock lines. Uh, they are all inversions and twists of the truth. He's the biggest spinner since Blair. Uh, but he just thinks if you repeat the same line over and over and over, in the end, people will start to believe you. The big disappointment were some of the questions. Nothing on m the massive legal net migration into the United Kingdom. Nothing on energy bills and the plan to build 18,000 wind turbines, which is still Conservative Party policy. They need to be subsidised by all of you sitting at home. And surprisingly, nothing on the international situation, you know, whether it be Gaza, Ukraine, the threat to Taiwan, and the current desperate state of the Army, Air Force mm. and Navy. Those things surprise me. I would like to have seen him answer some of those questions. I mean, it's so hard, isn't it, to get all the questions into the time that was that was had. But yeah. it was it was quite f funny with the, with the box. He really did not want to put his hand in that box to answer a question. You know, it was it was like he thought it was going to be an I'm a celeb challenge or something. Yeah, well, I'd know all about that, of course. <laughs> um, look, you know, I, I, I'm sure he walked off last night thinking, "Phew, I'm glad that's over." He would, you know. For someone like Sunak, that would be an ordeal. But an ordeal that he pretty much sailed through. He wasn't challenged on many of his key assertions, which are wrong. Um, it was a good night for him. It was a good night for GB News. Did we learn anything new about him, his personality, or his policies? No.
Can I just ask you, Nigel, um, the big political story um, was, of course, Keir Starmer's belated decision to withdraw support from that anti-Semite candidate in the Rochdale by-election. Too little, too late, wasn't it? They had 48 hours in which they could have um, struck him down. Yeah, here's Pat McFadden spinning for Labour this morning. We've been decisive, we've done the right thing. Well, no, you didn't. Um, just shows what a terrible pickle they're in, aren't they? You know, they, they, under Mr Blair's leadership, encouraged mass migration, and they got one particular group coming into this country, from Pakistan mostly, and that's the Muslim vote. 85 to 90 percent of it was voting Labour until this moment. Suddenly, over Gaza, uh, they are facing all sorts of challenges. I... I suspect uh, that to try and not be anti-Semitic um, or seem to be anti-Semitic and to keep uh, those mass millions of Muslim votes is going to prove to be long term impossible for Labour. They may just about hold it together this side of a general election. Longer term, it is a disaster for the party. And I promise you this, within two or three years, we will have religious sectarian politics in our country represented in Westminster. It gives me no pleasure to say that, but I can see it clear as day. Mm, very, very ominous. Yeah. I mean, do, do, you, do you think overall it will affect the Labour vote, Nigel, when it comes to the election? Because this is, a, you know, the biggest crisis, isn't it, for Keir yeah. Starmer in his time as Labour leader so far? I suspect in the general election, where we see uh, sectarian candidates who are putting the interests of Gaza above the interests of, I don't know, Tower Hamlets or wherever it may be. Uh, my suspicion is that for this general election, that will take place in constituencies where Labour already has a 20,000 majority. Do you see the point I'm making? Yes, there will be significant protest votes, but not enough to unseat Labour MPs at this stage. Uh, but I can see, I can see going on to the general election after this, a very, very different political situation in many of our inner cities and towns in the north of England.